Season 5 of The Expanse wrapped up with a fantastic episode that has me excited to see what happens in Season 6. This last season really paid attention to science and gave us some incredible scenes that were not only spectacular, but largely scientifically accurate. There was one scene in the final episode where a ship started flying around in a big circle or a corkscrew-like path. Was the physics of that scene right? Could a ship fly around in a big circle? Well, let's take a look. We're going to go into spoilers, so if you haven't watched the episode already, I do recommend you do so. But from this point on, there will be spoilers and physics. You have been warned. In the vacuum of space, far away from any planets, the only forces you really need to worry about are the forces generated by your own rocket. Deep space is the realm of Newtonian physics. A ship will only change motion if a force from a thruster makes it. So any changes in motion are the result of a net force acting on the object. This is a key point to remember. Okay, so with the physics preamble out of the way, let's get back to the expanse. To try and prevent Alex and Bobby from docking with her ship, which was a bomb, Naomi makes one of the thrusters at the nose of her ship fire. The short burst causes the entire ship to follow a circular path. When Naomi eventually abandons ship, which looked incredible, we're told that she ends up in the middle of the circling ship. Is all of this reasonable? Could you make a ship fly around in a circle like that? A thruster did apply a force to the ship, but could this force actually change the motion from a straight path to a circle? And could Naomi be trapped in the middle of that circle? Let's get an idea of what might happen by doing a rather unethical experiment with our own travelers lost in space. Say hello to the Kerbals, brave explorers of space. These charming creatures along with their rockets will help us understand the physics at play. First, we need to strand some in deep space. Luckily, here's a stranded crew I prepared earlier. Just like Naomi, they are somewhere far away from any planet, burning to nowhere in particular. They look pretty happy now, but that won't last. At the top of the ship, we have some thrusters to give it a push like what Naomi did to her ship, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so let's give it a quick burn. Immediately, we can see the short force has redirected the ship a bit. Now for the unethical part. Let's see what happens when one of our Kerbals jumps out like Naomi did. Oh dear. Unlike in the Expanse, where the ship circled Naomi, our poor Kerbal has been left very far behind and really doesn't seem too thrilled about this development. But what about the ship? Well, it's spinning alright, but not in the circle that we see in the Expanse. Instead, it's spinning very quickly around itself. The reason it's spinning comes down to another aspect of physics, torque and angular momentum. You see, the thrust at the top of the ship was far above the ship's center of mass, which sits about here. This means that when the engine fired, it applied a force offset from the center of mass, and that meant a torque was applied, which would make it start spinning around the center of mass. It's exactly the same as when I poke this pen. It spins around the middle. The only difference is you need to replace this pen with a spaceship and my finger with a rocket. So just a quick burst of a rocket offset from the center of mass will lead to the horrible spin our remaining Kerbals are in and not the nice circular path we see in the expanse. All right, so let's suppose that the thruster on Naomi's ship was aligned with the center of mass. Maybe that fixes the problems. To test this, I've stranded yet another unfortunate crew of brave Kerbals in deep space. In this ship, the side thrusters are lined up with the center of mass, which is right here. Like before, let's give the ship a boost and throw a Kerbal out the hatch. Immediately, we see there is no death spin like before because the force acted in line with the center of mass. Now let's say bon voyage to a Kerbal. Once again, the ship flies away, leaving our poor Kerbal all alone in the void of space. How unfortunate for them. So even with the thruster aligned with the center of mass, it still didn't work. Why is that? Simply the physics is wrong. A single burst of force won't make something follow a circular path. For every object moving in a circle, the net force must act continuously towards the center of the circle, perpendicular to the motion of the object. To see how the forces acted on Naomi's ship, let's make a force diagram. How fun. In this diagram, the arrows point in the direction that the force acts, 
and the length of the arrow corresponds to the size of the force. The first arrow is the thrust from the main engine. Next we want to add the side thruster. To add forces in a force diagram, we start the next force arrow where the last finished. So the side thruster's force is added like this. But what we want is the net or total force acting on the rocket. We can find this from the diagram by drawing an arrow connecting the start of the first arrow to the end of the last arrow, so a line like this. This makes a nice right angle triangle where we could calculate the net force if we wanted to. But that doesn't really matter in this case. What does matter is that the net force isn't doing what I said it needs to do for circular motion. It's kind of pointing towards the center, but not entirely. In this case, the force will make the rocket follow a kind of unbounded spiral path, growing with each revolution, not a circle. For the ship to go in a circle like Naomi's does, then we need to turn the ship 90 degrees so the main driver is pointing inwards, or just use the side thruster entirely. In this case, the net force would be directed perpendicular to the ship's motion and toward the center of the circle. Since in the expanse, Naomi's main engine never shuts off, the side thrust only fires for a brief moment, and it's also not aligned with the ship's center of mass, she should have ended up like the first Kerbal I ejected, hopelessly adrift far, far away from the ship, not in the center of the ship's circular path. So the physics of this scene certainly wasn't right, but it did look pretty cool, and it was a great excuse for me to talk about vector diagrams. One part that was accurate though, was hearing Bobby's muffled voice through the suits when they made contact sound would indeed carry through the suits, so that's neat. Anyway, I guess I now have a bunch of Kerbals I need to rescue, so I better get on to that.